Charlena Musk, welcome to Stateline. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We've recently had an election here in the Northern Territory and the country Liberal Party won with a convincing majority. One of their key election promises and also one of their priorities going into Parliament when it resumes this month will be to lower the age of criminal responsibility from 12 to 10. What is your stance on that change? Yeah, so it's, it's deeply disappointing to see that this is a proposal the new incoming government will bring within a month. Uh, it goes against all the well-established evidence that children this young, so ages 10 to 13, lack the emotional, mental and intellectual capability for criminal responsibility. How much do we know about children's capacity and their ability to make decisions at that level, at that age? Yeah, so there's been a lot of research, particularly from paediatricians and brain scientists, about how a child's brain develops over certain developmental ages. And what they have shown is that children's brains, particularly those regions responsible for impulse control, consequential thinking, are just not developed at that young age. So these children are more impulsive, they're more likely to make mistakes, to be led by their peers, and to not understand the long-term likelihood or consequences of their behaviour at that time. There's been research done in Victoria looking at children aged 10 and 11 who went through and were super, uh, sentenced to a youth justice order and their return rate was 86% coming back to the courts to be dealt with for further offending. Sending these kids through the formal system, criminalising their young behaviour only serves to reinforce what we should be trying to change and contributes to reoffending. Are there things that you saw throughout your career, particularly in the youth justice space, um, that has informed your perspective on this issue? Uh, what we know is that the vast majority who come into contact with the youth justice system will have disengaged from school. And I can say as a youth lawyer, that's what I was seeing. Many of these kids were, had been previously expelled or suspended, but they just weren't on the roll or were not engaging on a regular basis. If we were able to address their, um, particularly for the child protection cohort, their unmet disability, mental health and trauma needs, there's a less likelihood that they would have ended up in the youth justice system. There also seems to be this argument um, around the idea of detention as serving some sort of a therapeutic purpose. You know, children have more structure, they might have routine. What do you make of that argument? My office goes into the detention centres on a regular basis. Uh, in relation to Don Dale, uh, that's every two weeks. And so we have a fair idea who are the young people coming in. Um, as I mentioned, many of them are known to the child protection system or subject to child protection orders. Many will present with unmet disability, mental health and trauma needs. Um, many will have mental health conditions that have only just been diagnosed by the time that they end up in custody. There is a new Don Dale being built. Um, have you had a chance to visit that facility? Do you think that that you know, provides a more appropriate environment for a child as young as 10 or 12? Uh, the difficulty is children are now in Don Dale and Don Dale is a former maximum adult security prison. It's got the razor wire. It's the same concrete infrastructure that used to house really serious criminals and children can be subjected to um, really inhumane practices including strip searching, uh, it could be the use of restraints, and there's talk now about bringing back spit hoods that can cause immense harm to children with previously existing mental health conditions. There is a concern from the community about safety. Sure. And there is data to support that yeah. there are certain types of crimes that are going up, things like property crime, home break-ins. How does a government navigate that? Yeah, so for me, I acknowledge that there, are fear in, that there is fear in the community about crime and a link to youth offending. We're lacking an evidence base here in the Territory that is informing decision making. In this case, things that work are those that addresses the root causes of crime for young people. That includes getting them back into school, um, getting them help when it comes to trauma and disability needs. It's too late by the time they get into the justice system and definitely way too late if they end up in a place like Don Dale because there's only harm that comes from Don Dale and we're going to make you know, these, these young people into lifelong criminals. Shalina, where do you think lowering the age will see the Northern Territory in five, ten years' time? 
I don't have a crystal ball, but what we've known from past experiences is the younger children are, when they come into contact with the youth justice system, the higher the likelihood they'll reoffend, reoffend violently and go on to offending in adulthood. So um, for me, sadly, I foresee an escalation in, in ongoing youth offending, particularly for children who are criminalised at age 10, 11 or 12.